Okay, so let's finish off this last letter. And then we can actually start playing with coloring and putting our poster together, right? Now, I say spend most of your time thinking about the first letter and your last letter, right? And so I'm going to play with this one a little bit more. I'm going to use shear to tilt it in different ways. It's a little bit better. I'm going to stretch it out. And then I'm going to do something I haven't done, the, in, didn't do in the last two videos, but it's really fun to do. You use your lasso to, to separate out your type, and then you can use your small selection tool to grab whole sections of it and kind of squish it together, move it together in different ways. And then I can use my pencil tool and start modifying it directly. Uh, not like it when my pencil doesn't connect. <laughs> All right. So now just a few tweaks. And then in order to be able to make full use of my black <laughs> type, I'll save it as an EPS file and then move it as a smart layer into Photoshop. So just like I did with the top text and the ampersand, I want to view it without the sketch behind, make sure it's all readable. So I have absurdity and association. So this is uh, mapped really closely with my illustration, right? With the bunny and the bird. But if I want to give myself more flexibility, because I have two lines of type here, I'm going to save them as two different EPSs. So remember, you can turn off each individual path. So it's a good time to save the AI file. Now, because the, the font that I downloaded, the typeface from Defont, won't allow uh, to be embedded in a PDF because of licensing, right? What I could do at this point is just get rid of those layers, your type layers. So let me just review what that means. So here's one of these type layers. Oh, I already outlined that one. Let's get rid of that. Here we go. So here's a type layer. I'm going to move it off to the side so you can see the difference because one is is ready to use and one is not, right? So that's the type I used, and these are my modifications to it. 
In fact, even this was slightly modifications to it because it stretched so much taller. And I played with the kerning between letters. So now, the problem with this is this is still as a type layer, which allows me to do things like, you know, change it. But this requires the font to be loaded on the computer, the typeface to be loaded on the computer to read correctly. So before I could send this, even if I just use this type as is, before I could send it to a printer or to another computer to read properly, I need to select it, the large selection tool, right click on the line underneath and say create outlines. And what that does is basically live trace those vector shapes. And now it's not going to give me that warning anymore when I save it. Because now they're all just vectors. They're not relying on outside type typefaces. So that's how you would send it. And then I'm just going to strip it of those layers as I put it out. Now, these are all my individual vectors. You can see all of them there. I need to unlock them. La -dee -da -dee -da, la -dee -da -dee -da. All right. And now, oh, this is why I still got that warning. I have a type layer up here. So let me get rid of that. Okay. So what's nice is that it kind of puts them into logical groups. So from the ampersand on down, I'm just going to turn all those off and then save as, a, as an EPS for the association type. Now, this has to be what I am comfortable with, right? Because once it's in the smart layer, I don't want to edit it in Photoshop. I can paint over it. I can change its colors. I can add a drop shadow. But the spacing and all of that detail should already be in the black type. So I say file, save as, not as an AI file, not as a sketch anymore. But this is the association word as an EPS to the desktop. And then, and this is how you can do lots of varieties of different colorings on logos, things like that, all from the same AI file. Now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to turn on all the type at the top, all this stuff, and turn off everything above the ampersand. And I like saving to the desktop. I can hit F11 and I can see, okay, there it is. Here is the, the EPS for association, right? Perfectly clean, no matter what the size. It's a vector. Very good. Okay, now I want it for absurdity with the ampersand. So I save it again. File, save as. Change the name so it doesn't overwrite as an EPS to the desktop. Okay, now for good measure, I can save both of them together because that gives me the spacing that I had designed. But it gives me so much more flexibility to have them both um, separated so that I can move them higher, lower. I could even color them differently that way within Photoshop. Digital art gives us plenty of options. So I'm going to save this as an EPS of the full text. Now notice I have my sketch turned off because your EPS will save everything that's there and make that part of your smart layer. So you just want it clean. So that's my clean black and white text. It's a logo type instead of a logo, right? All right, now. I'm going to go to my poster. And for that, let's see, I need to go to assignment seven for my spot illustration. And what I'm going to do is actually open up my PSD for assignment seven. Now this is already a big file. It's at full resolution. Remember you use sizes like 16 by 20 behind it or even bigger. 
and it's got all these um, all these coloring layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is save it as my assignment eight poster, and then start merging some of those coloring layers that I'm comfortable with. But I still want to keep the vector outline as a separate layer. And then I'm going to bring on my vector type, which is right here. And Photoshop's taken a while to open. So it's a good time to remind myself of my inspirations, right? Because not only am I going to add a type around my poster, this is a nice one. Sometimes for my inspirations, you'll remember this from our, our landscape project. I'll just go to show view options because this truly is just inspiration. And I'll make the icons as big as possible, make the grid spacing as small as possible, and then just arrange by name. So I don't actually have to open the file to get inspired by them. But I kind of like this kind of approach, this slightly textured background, but just kind of flat color. And then the type going above and, and below my illustration. Supposed to be kind of a dreamlike poster. It's a theme of sleep. Okay, so already this file is at 1.43 gigabytes. So that's going to make everything kind of rough. I've already closed Illustrator. First thing I can do is just delete the layers that aren't turned on. You know, ones that I was experimenting with. And I did a lot of different coloring to show you guys. I do want to keep the backgrounds, though, the gray, the black, and the white. And then what I can do is I can merge all the layers that aren't my vector line work. So I can hold down Shift and select all those layers, and then just go to Layer, Merge Layers, or the shortcut for that is Command-E. That's going to save on the memory a lot, so now it's already under a gig. And because I colored the rabbit and the bird separately, I can then do that same thing for the bunny underneath its vector line work. And then just layer, merge, command E. That takes it down to only 417 megabytes. And then for all my color hold stuff on top of my vector line work, I can merge. So layer merge, merge layers, and there. Now it changed a little bit on a rasterization. Let's see if it actually changed or if that's just computer. Yeah, it changed a little bit there on a color hold. And I think it's that color hold. So I'm going to undo that. Yeah, it's that one. So I'm going to leave that one as is and just merge the others. But I'm keeping all of my vector smart layers. You see them in the icon. Keeping those as is. So I have now just one layer coloring the bunny underneath, and then one layer with the color holds on the, on the top. Actually, I have two layers with color holds on the top. And then same thing for the bird, one layer coloring underneath, and then just the vector line work. I don't really have any color holds on the bird because I replaced all the line work with, uh, with white anyway. So that is already a color hold. OK, now I need to increase the canvas size right, to make room for my type and for my text, just like I did when I sketched out my type blocking. So I'm going to turn on gray here. And I'm going to go to, actually, before I do that, let me save as a new name. So I don't want to overwrite. So this is going to be Carl Assignment 8. And this is a full color poster. That is our assignment. To the desktop. 